Amen. Praise be to God. I can't get that out of my head. <laughs> he saved me from myself. Praise God. Did he save you from yourself? Amen. He's been so good. I tell you, I, I'm so excited about what God has for us this morning. This is a, it, it is exciting to, to get into the word of God, to learn of him, to see the great things uh, that he has in store for us as we're willing to just open up and pour ourselves out to him. Um, if you have your Bibles, Matthew chapter 28, Matthew chapter 28, we're going to get right into the word. Um, what a, what, a, what a powerful time in worship. I pray that we would come into a greater wisdom and understanding of the things of God, that we, may, we, that we can truly enjoy His presence. Uh, I mean, uh, maybe, maybe you were there at one point. You know, I remember there's, there's a lot of things that I can remember even when I first got saved, you know, and, and there were times where I'd pray, God, uh, return unto me like the psalmist said, the joy of my salvation. Well, I can tell you this, God will return it and do even greater, amen. He'll do exceedingly and abundantly and above anything that you can ask or think according to his mighty working power in Christ Jesus. Man, I'm telling you, as we get, as we get ready today, uh, I know what I'm about to say. And some of them know about know what I'm about to say, those that have been here from the first service. Would you stand, though, this morning? Uh, Matthew chapter 28. I believe that the word that God has for us today, it's, it's liberating, it's powerful, and uh, if we'll let it, it'll, it'll work a mighty work in you. Uh, there's some things in your life that you're needing God to. You're needing God to do, to transform you, to change you, to, to really do a work in you. I can tell you, you've come into the right place. Matthew chapter 28, and I'm, I'm going to begin with verse 18. The Bible says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Father, we thank you today. We thank you for your presence, God. We thank you for your word, God. For, Lord, your word, you've declared that, God, that, um, that it's the truth that sets us free. And I pray that, God, that this morning as we deliver the truth of your word, that, God, that you would begin to set captives free. I pray that you would begin to set hearts free. Set the minds free. Set the, set the body free from, from sin and corruption, God. And, and set them free, Father, physically from sickness and illness, God. God, I pray that as your word is declared this morning, that, Lord, that you would go forth, that you would honor it. That, Lord, as, as you have once again said, that it will not return to you void, but it will do what you've commanded it to do. And that's all we're asking this morning, God, is that your powerful word that Jesus, you would move in this place, in the midst of your people, in a mighty and an awesome way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen <clears throat> and amen. Before you're seated, let somebody know that you're thankful that they're here. Praise God. Praise God. Good to see you. Good to be here. Good to be seen. Jesus comes to his disciples, and in this moment... We know this is the Great Commission, but right as he's getting ready to, to speak to them, Jesus speaks these words, and, and the thing is, is Jesus understands the power behind the words that he's speaking. Sometimes we read the Word of God, and we don't realize the power underneath what we're reading that God is declaring unto us, and, and we don't understand the cost that is behind it that had to be paid in order for it to come to pass, but Jesus understands it very well. And so he says to them, he says, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And, and as I said, this is such an exciting statement and a very powerful one. All power is given unto me. See, it's the nature of the Christian you and I, we've been talking about fasting. We've been, we, this, is, this is, for those of you that have joined us, this is our final day. Um, tomorrow you can resume your normal schedule as planned um, if you want to. But, uh, but if you want to continue going and you've seen God doing some things in your life, praise God. I, 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 I say keep doing it. Keep moving forward. God has greater things ahead. Um, but Jesus understood this. In the Christian life, the Christian experience... 
is to accumulate power. Now, some people say, well, well, you know, I'm, I'm too humble. I, I'm not here. I'm not about the power, Pastor. I just want to, I'm, I'm just a humble servant. Well, well, aren't we all? But God's desire for us is to accumulate power according to his word. And, and, and to accumulate it progressively as we are changed into the image of Christ. In whom said again... That all power in heaven and in earth has been given unto me. And then he he commissions those disciples with the same authority and with the same power. But But in order to understand this, we have to go all the way back to the beginning. And so if you have your Bibles, um, you can go with me to Genesis. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. See, when God created man, the Bible says that he created him in his image and in his likeness. In Genesis chapter 1, starting in verse 26, and we'll take a look at it together. He says, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion. Now God's not talking to the, to the angels. He's talking to uh, the Father. He's, the Father speaking to the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And let him have dominion over the fish of the sea. Over the fowl of the air. And over the cattle. And over all the earth. And over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. What you and I need to understand is that whatever God says becomes law. Whatever he says, it is established in heaven. And therefore, God speaks this word to to Adam. And, and, And when God speaks this word to Adam, let him have dominion over the over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over every creeping thing and he says and over all the earth so basically God is saying let Adam have dominion authority and power over all the earth and everything that is in it and then what God does is not some somewhat it's not what we always do but what God does is he puts his word to the test you see we we, we we'll say things like you know what God uh, um um You know, send me wherever you want to go, but we don't want him to put us to the test, right? Oh, oh, we will say things like, oh, I guarantee, but as long, we're just hoping that it, it, you know, doesn't get put to the test. But God puts his word to the test in Genesis chapter 2, just a few verses later, in verse 19, he says, And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. So what Adam did, in in, in other words, was what Adam, whatever Adam called them, that was what they were. That's what they are. So, so, so God stands back. He's given Adam dominion, power, authority over all the earth. And then he says, let's put this to the test. And so Adam stands there and God stands back. What is he going to call him? And you know, Adam, thinking, thinking about it, you know, you and I, if we were staring down a lion, we, we, would, we would have a whole lot of stuff going on in here. Adam calls the, calls the beast of the field before him, looks at him and says, you're a lion. From that moment on, it has always been a lion. You think about this. He, he sees the giraffe, giraffe, giraffe comes, I don't know how he came up with that, but he says, you're a giraffe. And from that moment, that's what that animal was called. And and, and even if you'd go even a little further, that everything that Adam said, every human being that would ever come after him 
would have that understanding that that's what it is and that's what it'll always be. We don't understand the power that God has given us. So a name signifies, at least it did in Bible times, what you are. What you are, what kind of person you are. Let me give you an example. We look at Abram, who God changes his name to Abraham. And he calls Abraham the father of many nations. Abraham doesn't have a child to his name. God stands before Abraham, you remember the story, and and, and he tells him, you're going to be the father, I'm changing your name to Abraham, because you're going to be the father of many nations, Sarah's over there laughing, because she doesn't, it's impossible for her to have a child. But But Abraham understood something, Abraham understood that when God said something, it would come to pass, because once again, whatever God says, or whatever God speaks, becomes law. It's done, it's finished. It's a promise, waiting on a, waiting on a time to be fulfilled for the glory of God. His word will come to pass. Jacob, the Bible says, um, if you remember the story of Jacob, he's the twin and Esau's his brother and Esau's being born and Jacob grabs his heel as he's coming out. And so the name Jacob is heel grabber or deceiver where we get the word, where we get the phrase, um, are you pulling my leg? Are you lying to me? Are you, are you deceiving me? Because Jacob was a deceiver. Jacob goes in, deceives his father. Jacob gets sent out of his house because he's made a mess of things. Sent to his father-in-law Laban. He deceives his father-in-law. He deceives his brother-in-laws. He deceives his, everybody that he comes in contact with. He is just deceiving everybody everywhere as he goes. And now he's on. On his way back to meet his brother who he deceived and stole his birthright. See, the name meant that's what you were. And so Jacob comes to that place where he realizes that it's about to be over with with him because surely his brother's going to kill him. And so he has a moment with God. He stays behind, sends everybody else up ahead, and he's laying there in the desert at the place called Peniel. And there's a stairway there, and angels are ascending and descending. And he wakes up, catches one, and he takes a hold of him, and he's got a hold of the angel of the Lord. Now the angel says, let me go because day is about to break. But the Bible says, Jacob continued to wrestle the angel all night until daybreak. And he says, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. You see, the angel looks at him and says, from now on your name will no longer be called Jacob deceiver from this moment forward it will be called Israel a prince who contends with God and prevails oh my I I don't know about you but I, I can tell you Jacob understood then he touched the hollow of his thigh and he walked away a limping man leaning on the power of God understanding that the only reason he'll ever contend with God and prevail is because God is with him the only one that's going to deliver him is, is God himself but one who contends with God a prince who contends, contends with God and prevails now see here's the problem the world, has a, the world has a real problem with the, the, the way things, the way that God has placed things. You say, well, why do you say this? Well, I didn't think you'd ever ask. In Genesis chapter 2, a few verses down, you'll see it. Starting in verse 22, the Bible says, And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man. See, God didn't name her. The Bible says the rib, he had already fashioned her, made her who he wanted her to be, a helpmeet for Adam, but he didn't name her. 
The Bible says, the rib that he had taken from man made he a woman and brought it unto the man. And, the, and Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. And she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. So, so Adam calls her and names her woman because she was taken from him, flesh of his flesh, bone of his bone. And so here's the, here's the problem. The world doesn't know what a woman is. They have a documentary out there. What is woman? We don't know. We don't know. Well, I can tell you what a woman is. What Adam called her. It was the female counterpart of the man. It was the feminine side of the man. She was taken from the side, not the foot so that he could stand over, not the head so that she could rule over him, but from the side because they were, they were to stand one with the other. See, people get it all messed up, but God knew what he was doing. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Now remember that whatever God speaks becomes law, and this is what God had declared. So Adam now had the dominion, had the authority, had the right to declare whatever he said would come to pass because now he is in right standing with God because sin has not entered in to him at that moment. The fall hadn't taken place. And I'm going to touch on this briefly because it will help us to understand the rest of what I'm going to declare to you this morning. The fall hadn't taken place, and so after the fall, what happens is Adam loses his dominion, his authority in the spiritual realm. Man still has power in the earth, but Adam gives up his spiritual dominion and authority, the highest level of, of authority and power that a human being can have. And he hands it over to Satan because Satan deceived him you see God said I'm going to put man here I'm going to give him dominion power and authority over all the earth and in doing so um, he has that authority and nobody can take it away from him but he has to give it away that's the only way that it could happen Adam in the fall gave it over to Satan that's why the Bible says he's the God of this world because a man gave the authority and the power over to Satan himself. Now, God says, and the Bible says that he cast him out of Eden. And he said, your kind can never come into my presence again. Meaning, that flesh, that carnal nature. That carnal person. This is why it's so important for us to live uh, according to the word of God, not according to our own understanding. The Bible says, the, the Bible tells us and teaches us, there's a way that seems right unto a man, but in the end leads to destruction. In the days of Noah, every man did what was right in his own eyes, and we know the end of that. And I can tell you what's happening in the world today. Everybody seems to be doing what's right in their own eyes. And sadly enough, the church has joined in with them and does whatever's right in their own eyes instead of sticking to the word of God. So whatever God speaks, whatever he says becomes law. Psalm 138. Psalm 138. I want you to see what God does here. And what God has done by handing over and giving, giving man dominion. The Bible says in Psalm 138. 138 verse 2. He says, for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name." Now you have to understand something. God will never violate his word. God will never act contrary to what he has already declared. And what he has already established. And so therefore we have to, we have to keep that in mind. If God will not violate his word. What makes us think that we have the right to violate his word. And still Stand in his presence. Oh, praise God. Oh, praise God. 
Look at your neighbor. Tell him it's coming. It's coming. I got to wake you up this morning. Come on. What I'm about to, what I, what the things that we're about to hear, I'm telling you by the word of God, I'm telling you, it'll, it, it, it should, it should be f- food for the soul that, that God, you're taking me to a, an, another level. You're, you're about to restore some things. So by giving man dominion, what God did is he handed over authority to man. That anything that happens on the earth, it has to come through a human being, through flesh and blood, through a body. Oh, that's why we look around and we say, we say, well, God's omnipotent. He's all powerful. He can do anything. He can move mountains. He can, and, and, and why does it seem like if God is all powerful, and, and, and there are a lot of people that have questions, and, and if God is all powerful, then why do so many suffer? Why do so many die? Why do so many die to, to, to sickness and all of these things? And, and, and why is it that we have human trafficking? If God is all powerful and knows everything, then why? Why? Because he's given the authority to men. And here's the thing. God is a spirit. And this is the problem. That, that when God spoke this word and gave authority over to the man what God did was he willfully limited himself limited and restricted himself to do anything on the earth why because the bible declares God is a spirit and therefore he needs a body you see this is why the devil will possess people so that he can, he can do his bidding or his work through people. And I can tell you this. We have some that are in Washington. And other governments around the world. That are filled with the demonic powers. That Satan is doing his bidding through them. Because he can't just do it as a spirit. He needs a body. Why do you think when Jesus comes to the man of Gadara and he looks at him and the man says, he says, who are you? And he says, legion for we are many. The man was possessed with at least 2,000 demons and they all wanted to have their way with him. I could only imagine the torment and the torture and everything that he was going through. And Jesus says, loose him and let him go. And they said, well, can we at least go into the pigs? Jesus said, go into the pigs. The pigs ran into the water and and, and expired right there in in, in the ocean because they couldn't even stand to have the devil inside of them, but somehow men allow the devil to control them. So God limited his activity on earth to a man. So... You say, you say, does the scripture prove that? Yeah. See, when God wanted to birth a nation, he called Abraham. He called Abraham, and, and Abraham had to come into contractual agreement with God because whatever God says is law. So God says to Abraham, I need you to, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a son. The Bible says this, That when God called Abraham out and Abraham, the Bible says, believed God and it was imputed unto him as righteousness. In other words, Abraham came into agreement that I take what you have said, God, and and, and let it be on uh, in in my life. Let it happen. See, when God wanted to, when God, whatever God speaks, as I said, it becomes law. So. When God wanted to deliver the nation, I want you to turn with me to Exodus, Exodus chapter 3. When he he wanted to deliver the nation of Israel out of the land of Egypt, we know what God does. He calls Moses. But I want you to, I want you to, I want to walk you through this so you get the idea or see what God is doing. Because we, we, we can't think of, you mean the omnipotent God limited himself? Yes. Yeah. Exodus chapter 3, starting verse 7. And the Lord said, 
I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. And I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. I know their sorrows. And then hear this, what he says. And I am come down to deliver them. Praise God. He's come down. God has come down to earth to deliver them. Praise God. Got one brother in agreement. God is saying, I've seen them. I've heard them. I know what's going on, and I've come down to set them free. I've come down to deliver them. He says, I've come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out into the land, good, a good land, a large land, a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hevitites and the Jebusites. And then he says, and now therefore... Behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppress them. And then he says to Moses, Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring them, bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Wait a minute. Oh, see, I was okay when God said, I've come down to deliver my people. Whoa, praise God. Do it. And that's the way most people do, right? Oh, God said, God said in his word, and and, and I'm just waiting on God, and I'm just waiting on God, and I'm just waiting on God. Well, if God said in his word, then you're not understanding. We're not understanding something here. Every promise is conditional. The the law of God has been set. And God is not going to violate his law. Look at what Moses says to God in in verse 11. And Moses said unto God. Whoa, 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 whoa. Paraphrasing. Wait a minute, God. He says, who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh? And that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? Who am I? What, what, What do you mean? I I can't even speak. He's he's up there stuttering, stammering lips. Uh, God, you, 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 I'm wrong guy, God, wrong guy, right here. And this is what, I mean, because when God begins to speak, he says, now hear this. He says, I've seen, I've heard their cry, I know their sorrows. I've also seen their oppression and I've come down. But I need a body. I need a body, Moses. I need you to come into agreement with me and give me permission to use you, to work through you the promises I've declared to you. The Bible tells us, and I believe it's Ezekiel chapter 33, where God lays out all of these promises, and he says to them, he says, but for all these things, I will be inquired. Meaning, you are going to have to ask me if you want me to respond to these things. But now here God is saying to to Moses, This is what I want to do, and this is where I'm going. And and in verse 12, he says, and he said, certainly I will be with you. Now, Moses, I'm not sending you alone. See, this sounds like the great commission to me. Lo, I go with you always, even unto the ends of the world. He that was with you shall be mm, in you. Oh, and Jesus said, I'll never leave you. And so he looks at Moses and he says, Moses, um, I'm ready to move. And Moses is still standing back there. And he's trying to get, come on, Moses. Let's get on board. And Moses is, and, and, and Moses has to come into agreement because, again, he needed a man to work through. Ultimately, Moses agrees. And therefore, God delivers the nation You see, in the garden, in the garden of Eden, Satan thought that he had pulled a fast one on God. 
But see, what that, what that old serpent didn't know was, was God, God is not just uh, all-powerful, but he's omniscient. He's all-knowing. He inhabits eternity, the Bible says. And so therefore, with God, there is no time. There is no, this it starts here. and this, No, God looks at time, and he, the Bible declares that he knows the beginning from the end. And so therefore, God looked in through time. He knew everything that would happen all the way through time. He, could, he knew it forward. He knew it backward. He knew it upside down. He knew it inside out. He knew it all. And so he had set the plan in motion that even though he knew that he was relinquishing his power and delegating it to a human <laughs> on earth, he knew what he was doing. Look what it says in Genesis chapter 3. In Genesis chapter 3, this is what God tells that old serpent. In Genesis 3, 15, he says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. And it shall bruise thy head, and thou shall bruise his heel. I'm going to put a division between you and the seed of the woman. That, that there's coming a time, devil, that there's this, her seed will crush your head and you might bruise his heel. But I can tell you this, you will be, you will be relieved of your position and stripped of your authority. Look at Hebrews with me. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. This is, this is good stuff. I know I've got a long way to go. A short time to get there right now. I'm taking a little bit too long maybe. I'm going to do it again. Who give me five minutes? Come on. Give me a show of hands. 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 35, 40. Praise God. Praise God. We got all night. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10. Starting with verse 4. He says, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats take away sins. Wherefore, when he comes into the world, he says, sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not. Now listen to this. But a body thou hast prepared for me. Oh, we know what body he's talking about right there. He says, sacrifice and offering, the blood of bulls and goats, that, that doesn't matter, but a body thou hast prepared for me. See, this was the fulfillment of the word of God, of a word that became law that was a prophetic word because a prophecy is just waiting on a day, waiting on a moment to be fulfilled. It's a, it's a promise from God. In John chapter 1, because he says, a body, John chapter 1, a body thou hast prepared for me. And in John chapter 1, in verse 14, the Bible says, And the word was, was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Praise God. The word became flesh because the word was... and, 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 and Verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by Him, and none, nothing that was made was made without Him, and the Word became flesh. Are we, are we, are we understanding all of a sudden? Mm, 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 mm. Isaiah prophesied 700 years before of the coming of Christ. And he says, unto us a child is born. And unto us a son is given. See, the child that was born was Jesus, the man. The son that was given was Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, God himself. So Jesus, the one that was born, was Jesus, the man. Christ was the one that was given, the child that was given, the Messiah, who is God. 100% man, 100% God, now God with skin on him. Emmanuel, God with us. 
Oh, God secured him. Oh, oh God, in Jesus' name. So from the beginning, before it all. This is, I don't, are you following me? Are you tracking with me? Come on, I need somebody. To, I, are, you, are you with me? I haven't lost you yet. Praise God. <laughs> from the beginning, God had it planned out. He created a woman to carry the child in her body. And you can ask any medical doctor that the womb of the woman, in the womb, her blood never intermingles with that child's blood. So God from the very beginning, because Satan thinks that he's so wise and so smart that that God before he allowed one day, because the Bible tells us that before one day of your life came to pass, all of it was written in a book. In other words, you were not, none of us, not one of us is a mistake. In other words, God had your life planned out before your mother and father even met each other. And so God had a plan before the worlds began because the Bible teaches us that he was the lamb that was slain from the foundations of the world. So God knew that when he created woman, he would put in her a womb to have a child. That's why when they take a paternity test, they they test if it's the father. It's not the mother. It's the father's blood. And so what the Bible teaches us is that God, by design, he sends an angel unto a young lady called Mary and he tells her and I'm paraphrasing that God wants to use you and God wants to it needs your body for his finest and his final and greatest act this is what the angel is telling her look turn with me Luke chapter 1 Luke chapter 1 you have to see it for yourself because this isn't my words this is his words In Luke chapter 1, starting with verse 31, he says, And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. The child that's born, Jesus. And and his name shall be called Jesus. Skip to verse 35. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Skip down to verse 38. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed. Now here the angel comes to her and says, this is what's going to happen. But, but God is not going to violate your free will. He's not going to go against your consent. Now Satan will do that. Satan, the Bible says that he, he, sin lies at the door. <clears throat> And the moment he gets to come in, boy, I'm telling you, he takes over the house. And he, he'll, once you give him a, 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 the right to come in, because you have to give him the right. For anybody that's demon possessed, somewhere along the line, they gave that devil the right to come in. And, and the, he's only there. And once he came in, he's there to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And so, Gabriel says to Mary... The the power of the Most High, the Holy Spirit is going to come upon thee. And the power of the highest is going to overshadow thee. And and you you, you are going to conceive the Son of God. Now the beautiful thing is that while Christ was in the womb, he was protected from the sinful flesh. Oh, Holy Mary, Mother of God. They say... They would, I can tell you she was just a human just like you and me. 
Just a human just like you and me, prone to sin and all these other things. She needed God just as much as, she, as you and I do. He said, but I'm going to put, her, put my, my son in there. Your flesh and blood, your blood is not going to intermingle with his. He's going to have a blood, the blood of a royal priesthood. He's going to have the blood of God Almighty. There's never been any blood like this. There'll never be any other blood like it. This is pure blood. And with that blood, I'll wash the sins of the world and cleanse the, the sins of, of the nations and all of those that call upon my name. And he says to her, he says, These, this, this is the word of God. This is the plan of God. And he's waiting. And he's waiting. He's waiting for Mary to consent. And that's why she says, it says in verse 38, be it unto me according to thy word. Boom, he was gone. He had got the consent, received the consent. The word that God had spoken could now be spoken and, and delivered into her womb. Now he has secured himself a body. See, the child that was born was a man. That, that was man. And, and the son that was given, that was Christ. The Messiah, the anointed one, that was God. And this is why the Bible refers to the church. To the church. Whenever you read it, as the body of It doesn't say the body of Jesus. Whenever the Bible speaks or refers to the body of Jesus, it refers to his natural body. But whenever the, body, the Bible speaks of the church, it says the body of Christ, the Messiah, the risen one. And, and, and the, body, the body was laid in a tomb. And I, and I want you to hear this. The body was laid in a tomb. Christ, the anointed one, was the one that descended into the pits of hell and he took the keys from the devil. And the Bible says that he led the captives free. And according to Ephesians 4 and 8, the Bible says, Wherefore he saith, when he is ascended up, and up on high, he led captivity captive and he gave gifts unto men. He walked down into hell and the devil was surprised to see him. You don't have a right to be here. He said, yeah, my body's up there it's laying in a grave right now. I've come to set the captives free. He walked up to the devil because a man handed him over the dominion, the authority, and the power. Satan had a hold of it. And as a man, Jesus had the right. But the Messiah walked up to the devil and said, I'll take those back. And he took back the keys of the kingdom. He took back, the Bible says, death, hell, and the grave. And the curse of sin over mankind. Praise God. And he led captivity captive. What it means is he took the devil, threw him in the, threw him in the, the, the cell, threw away, they took the keys with him, and, and stripped him of his authority and power. So why, why, pastor, is it that there's sin and destruction? and Why is it that there's everything still going on around us? You want to come? Look what the Bible says in Hebrews. The Bible says in Hebrews, and this is why it's so important for us, those of us that are fasting, those of you that call yourselves believers to offer your body, to give yourselves, to give yourselves, to give yourselves. In Hebrews chapter 10, and I'm not going to read it all for time's sake, but I'll start in verse 12. He says, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever. He will never die again. He will never be crucified again. The Bible says after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down on the right hand of God. And from henceforth expecting till all his enemies be made his footstool. Expecting all of his enemies to be made his footstool. Remember Acts chapter 1. O Theophilus, I've written to you of all the things that Jesus began to do and to teach. In other words, he didn't finish. He left it up to you. 
He left it up to me. He's expecting till all his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he had perfected forever them that are sanctified. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us, you and me. If you're filled with the Holy Ghost, I can tell you, we used to, I remember the old mothers of the church the way they used to say it. I'm saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, and man, I'm on my way to heaven. Praise God. They understood something more than, more than I can dare say. What, 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 sadly enough, what a lot of believers profess to believe today. I'm saved. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm on my way to heaven. Praise God. I'm filled with the power. I'm filled with dominion. I'm filled with authority. He says, after, for after that he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with those, uh, with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their heart and in their minds I will write them. And the sins and iniquities will I remember no more. And their remission for these, there is, and now where remission for these is, there is no more offering for sin. Matthew, <clears throat> again, that verse that we started with in Matthew 28 and, 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 and 18. Jesus, now you understand, this meant something to Jesus. Because he had fulfilled everything that the, that the Father had given him. Everything that the, everything that the Father had, had, had set upon his shoulder. Remember, the Bible says the government would be upon his shoulders. In other words, all authority, all power, and to whomsoever he delegates it. That's why Paul says, I'm an ambassador of Jesus Christ. In other words, I don't come in my own strength, in my own will, in my own name, in my own power. But I come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. David understood it. I don't come to you with spear and sword, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. Jesus understood what he said when, it, when the Bible says, all power is given. As God, he didn't need it to be given. As a man, he needed it to be given to him. So he says, all power. In other words, all power is given unto me. And listen to me. In heaven and on earth. <laughs> Did you get it? He had delegated it to a man. He secured a body. And now he has the authority once again over the earth because he had a body. The Bible tells us on the day of Pentecost, he picked up another body. And that's the body of Christ, praise God, where he could fill it with the Holy Ghost and power so that we could be filled and led by the Spirit, so that we could lay hands on the sick and watch them recover. That's why he said, to them that believe, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They shall cast out devils. If they tread on serpents, they shall not hurt them. If they drink deadly poison, that doesn't mean you go out and find some, some muriatic acid. No, they, but, but if somebody tries to poison, you don't have to worry about it. Just like Paul, bitten with a serpent, didn't have to shake that thing off. Why? Because I have the blood of Jesus Christ that covers me. I have dominion and power and authority. I'm healed. I'm set free. I'm delivered. This is why it's of the highest importance for us as believers. As Paul declares in, in, in Romans chapter 12 and verse 1, to offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy mm, and acceptable. Because God doesn't fill the unholy. Offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto Him, which is your reasonable service, or as other translations, uh, your act of worship. But in other words, it's the least that you can do and I can do in light of all that he's done for me and in light of all that he's done for you. He says, offer your body as a living sacrifice. Why? So God can fill it. John says, I have to decrease that he might increase. The more of him, the more power. This is why the Bible says, 
Because now he's clothed us and he's crowned us with glory. He's crowned us with that authority. He says, whatever you bind on earth, I'll bind it in heaven. In other words, the word that I sent, because you did it, I'll honor it. Everything that we do according to his will, whatever you loose on earth, loosed in heaven. The word has been released from heaven. My word will not return unto me. Why? Because I've got a body now. I've got somebody to believe me. I've got someone that, that's willing to declare my word. I've got someone that will stand in the gap and make up the hedge. I've got someone that will believe for the sick. I've got someone that will, will believe for the mentally ill. I've got someone that will stand and declare my word. And I've got a body that I can work through. You see, I'm just a conduit. I'm just a vessel. And I need to clear everything out so that more of him and less of me oh my God more of him and less of me would you stand this morning it's a it's a highest honor the greatest thing that we could ever do is give it all to God that's why the Bible says that God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth Praise God. See, here's the thing. We, we wonder. Let me go back and answer your question now. Why is there evil in the earth? Why is there human trafficking? Why is there, why is there sickness and disease? Don't get me wrong. I know that we live in a fallen world and all of us one day, the Bible says, uh, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But Paul understood this. And those that, those that were with Paul understood this. Paul beaten five times. 39 lashes minus 40 lashes minus one. 39 lashes. Stoned twice. And when they stoned him, they meant to kill him. And the Bible says that when the disciples came around him and began to pray. They had crushed his skull with stones. They had crushed his bones, his ribs. They stood over because that's what they did. They didn't just throw these little pebbles. No, they would take these boulders. They'd stand over them and they would crush them. Paul's here, a, a heap of flesh. And they get around and begin to pray for him. And they, they're, they're praying, God, bring him up. Heal him. Raise him up. God says, I'm not done with him. Thank God you're there to pray for him raises them up the Bible says Paul went right back into the place where they threw him out of because he didn't finish his sermon praise God paraphrase it. <laughs> you think of Peter who's in prison the Bible says that they gathered together in the home and began to pray when they began to pray God released Peter they had already killed Mark. God released Peter before, before he meets the same end because that's what they planned on doing. God said, now I can release him because I've got a body to work through. Sends an angel, takes Peter, looses him, brings him to the house. They can't even believe that their own prayers are answered. Praise God. Everything that God does, he does through a human being. As I said, Satan does the same thing. That's why there's powers in high places in our governments that are fighting against the will of God and the purpose of God and the things of God. And the only reason that the enemy can do it is because the church has sat idle. And this isn't about political the only reason sickness and all of these things have reigned and ruled, the only reason that people's minds are tormented more now than ever, prior, because part of it because of COVID and all of the effects of, that, of, of staying in, in home, and, and, and it just seemed to, to worsen from that moment on. And now with all of the, the craziness, they don't know what, what a man is or a woman, and, and we have all of these things that we're supposed to just 
you know, be okay with, that God's not okay with for whatever reason, and we somehow think, well, it's just going to sweep it under the rug, somebody else's problem. No, it's our problem. And the reason that those things are still here is because the church, sound asleep. God is saying, I need a body. God is saying, I've heard their cries. God is saying, I've seen their oppression and their affliction. God is saying to you and to me, I know what they are facing. And I have come down. I've come down to deliver them. I've come down to heal them. I've come down to set them free. But I need a body. What we do is offer our bodies a living sacrifice. The thing I love about this is God doesn't need it. God doesn't need a fancy body. He's not looking. He doesn't need your talents. He doesn't need your gifts. He doesn't need your looks. He doesn't need all of these things. The Bible says he took some unlearned fishermen and they knew that they were unlearned and everybody else knew that they were unlearned. But the Bible says they took notice because they had been with Jesus and they couldn't believe the words that were coming out of their mouth. And they didn't only speak these words, but there was a power that followed it. And here the church sometimes, oh, we've got got some some great preachers. Oh, they, they, they give you some good words, but there ain't no power to follow it. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm a part of the body of Christ and so are you. So, so here, here we go. We all have to do our part. You see, there was a, I, I heard a story a long time ago. A man who was upset. He came to Brother Clendon at one time and he said he was upset because his wife was sick and the church didn't heal her. And I'll never forget what Brother Clendon said. He said, were you part of that church? Yeah. Then why didn't you heal her? He's looking for a body. He's looking for a willing vessel. When we fast, what we're doing is we're emptying ourselves. Less of me, God. More of you. When we get into the word, less of me, God of you when we come Jesus said if you love me you'll obey me more of you Lord less of me the more of him that can get in the more that can get out oh God I pray in Jesus mighty name for a mighty moving of your spirit and your power even now in this moment God in this, in this place in this hour God, we're living in a time, Father, where we've needed more of your spirit, more of your presence, God, more of your power. God, if there's ever been a time for the body of Christ to stand up, God, it's now. God, if there's ever been a time, Father, to be counted, it's now, God. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ, first and foremost, I want to make sure we get this, that, that, you, that you come to that place because you cannot get, receive anything else before you do this. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if He is not the Lord of your life, and He's not the Savior of your life, you can't receive any of the promises, any of the blessings. And I'm not asking how much you know about Jesus. I'm asking, do you know Jesus? The Bible says we believe in our heart. We confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. He's faithful, just, forgives us of all our sins. What do we believe in our heart? We believe that Jesus came, that God came in the form of a man. He gave his life, his body on the cross, shed his blood for our sins, was laid in a tomb, and on the third day he was raised again. He's ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of God. And the Bible says when we believe, when we come to that place, that's when salvation comes. And if you're here today, you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, Lord and Savior, I want to I give you that opportunity. I, I want to pray with you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the church to pray with us. 
And if you want to, and if you want to pray that prayer, whether you're here watching online, uh, I want you to pray this prayer. And I believe that God is going to do a work in your life. And this is going to be just the beginning of a lifelong relationship with him. Would you pray? Father, forgive me of all my sins. Jesus, I know what you did for me on the cross. You gave your body to be broken open and your blood to be poured out for my sins. Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. Be my Savior, my Lord, and my God. Holy Spirit, come and live in me. Empower me to live my life in a way that honors and pleases the Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. God, to you be the glory. If you prayed that prayer and you truly meant it, this is the beginning of a lifelong relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Greatest thing, greatest decision that you could, you could have ever made greatest decision you could have ever made but right now what I want to do in these next few moments because I believe in the in the power of praying I believe in the power of the altar <clears throat> see the altar is a place it signifies that place where the sacrifice is laid offering our bodies as a living sacrifice we come we should be doing this every day every morning coming to that altar and, and, and praying and asking God to change us and to transform our lives and to make us more like him. I, just like the song said, more like you, Jesus. Every day, Holy Spirit. And so what I want to do is maybe, maybe there's things in your life that you've been struggling with. And, you know, we've, as I said, we've, been go, we've, we've come through this time of fasting. The Bible said when, when we finally do it right, in other words, God has the freedom to flow in us and through us. He said, your, your health would spring forth speedily. He said, he's, he tells us that your light would break forth in darkness. And that he would guide your steps everywhere. Maybe you need direction today. Maybe you need healing physically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally. Maybe there's something in your life. Maybe there's a part of you that, is, that has been struggling and, and you've been trying to get through some things. Maybe you just need some direction in your job or in your home. Uh, maybe, maybe your children need to be delivered. Maybe somebody in your family and God says, I'm here to do it, but I need a body. I need you. And if that's you today, I, I'm telling you, what I want to do is I just want to open up these altars. Because I believe that powerful things happen in these altars. When we come together collectively as the body of Christ. And we begin to lay these things down. And so in the next few moments, what I want to do is, as I, if, if you have a need, whatever it is, or you just say, you know what, Pastor? I just need to give more of my life to God. I just need to surrender more to Him. Pastor, I know that I, I can tell you, your pastor needs to. Every day I want to become more and more like Christ. Every day I want to, I, I, the Bible says that my life, your life as a believer is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. It means that I've never arrived. I just keep becoming more and more like Jesus Christ. And I can tell you this, I want to become more and more like him so that he can flow freer and freer through me so freely through you and I. If that's you, I want you to come and just give it to God this morning. And I want to stand in agreement with you this morning in prayer. Because the Bible says this, that if any two as agree on anything here on earth, it shall be done. Would you pray? Father, pray that God, that right now, God, as we, as we come before you, <clears throat> that God... You would hear our prayers. You would hear our cry. You would see the desire of this heart, God. And maybe there's somebody here, Father, that's saying, saying again, God, the, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Well, God, I come in agreement today, Father. I come in agreement. 
I come in agreement. We're going to have some leaders that are come, going to come, and they're going to just they're just going to come in agreement with you today. Whatever it is that you're needing, according to the will of God, and we're going to we're going to believe and stand with you. I believe that God is going to heal. I believe that God is going to set free. God, we come into agreement, God. That Father, that you're going to set us free. That, Lord, that that you're going to loose the bands. You're going to help us loose the bands of wickedness. You're going to set the captives free, God. I pray that, God, that in the mighty, mighty, mighty name of Jesus, we want to be more like you. But, Father, more than anything else, here's a body. Use it for your glory. Use it. For your will. Use it for your purpose. Give me boldness. Give me wisdom. Give me understanding so that I know how to do, what to do, and when to do it. Father, I ask it in Jesus, in Jesus, Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. God. We are so indebted. We're so thankful. God, that you would use us, that you would deliver us, that you would call us, that you would sanctify us, set us apart, God. Lord, I thank you because God, in in your omniscience, you knew what you were doing. And God, now... I pray that, God, that we would take, Father, your yoke upon ourselves, that we would learn of you, that we would come to that place where we would realize, Father, that it's your will and not my own, and that, Lord, that there's nothing else in this life to, to live for but to fulfill your will. God, there's nothing to go back to. That old wretched life that the enemy tries to, to, to snare and bring it, God, there's nothing to go back to. God, we give it to you. We release it to you this morning. We thank you, Jesus, for doing the work and for setting us free. I pray that, God, that as we have freely received, we would freely give. I pray that, God, that we would position ourselves to receive from you, to be filled with your power. And that, God, that we could release that power everywhere we go. Give us boldness to declare your word, Jesus. Give us boldness to declare that name that has given us the legal right here on earth to wield the power of God here on earth. All for your glory. All for your honor all for your purpose may your will be done in each one of our lives I ask it Jesus in your mighty mighty name hallelujah 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 he is so good he is so good he's so good he's so good oh boy I tell you I think I could jump think I could dance think I could shout a little bit I think I could run around a few times. Praise God. God is so, so good. Amen. He's filled us. He's empowered you to be, to be a blessing uh, and to carry his name wherever you go. We love you and God bless you.